Hey gamers, welcome back to Creative Gamers. The new Eden V4 RC3 update is here, and it brings a cleaner, smoother experience overall. Load times feel quicker, gameplay is steadier, and several issues from RC2 have been quietly fixed in the background. It's a solid improvement and one of the most reliable Switch emulator options on Android right now. In this video, we're breaking down everything that's new, what's improved, and how it performs across different games. Let's take a closer look. Eden V4 RC3 brings major improvements across the board. Universal updates include smoother performance, up to 10 FPS boost, updated translations, and fixed stuttering in Tears of the Kingdom. Renderer fixes resolve black screens in Ninja Gaiden Ragebound, improve graphics in Pokemon Legends Z-Day, and fix the flip screen in 20XX. Android updates fix crashes in UE4 games and Assassin's Creed 3, allow manual CPU ticks and language changes, and add system info. Internal changes improve stability, reduce shader code duplication, and fix FFmpeg and formatting issues. Overall, RC3 delivers smoother performance across all games. Before starting setup, you'll need the Eden APK, the firmware file, the prod.keys file, and your own Nintendo Switch game files. Once you have everything, open the Eden app. Enable notifications so you don't miss updates. Then install your prod.keys file by selecting it from storage. After that, install your firmware. This takes a little time, so wait for it to finish. Now set your game directory by selecting the folder where your XCI or NSP files are stored. Once done, your games will appear on the home screen and the basic setup is complete. Now let's optimize the settings. Go to advanced settings to system settings. Set limit speed to 200% for better performance, especially when targeting 60 FPS. Scroll down to web token and generate a code, then type any username in the web username field. This is required for online functions but doesn't affect gameplay. Now return to advanced settings and open the graphics settings. Set the accuracy level to normal, then set resolution to balanced 1x, and if you're on a low-end device, you can reduce it to 0.75x for better FPS. Avoid turning on force maximum clock because it creates heavy heating without giving any meaningful improvement. Make sure asynchronous shaders is enabled and change V-Sync mode to immediate, which is basically off. Scroll down to the bottom and set the aspect ratio to stretch to window. Back in advanced settings, you will see the device overlay option. I personally don't need it, so I turn it off. Then open the special Eden's veil settings. Set extended dynamic state to one or two, depending on your device's power. High-end phones can use two, while mid-range phones should stick to one. Below that, there's an option called release fences early. Only enable it if your game gets stuck at 0 FPS during launch. If everything works normally, keep it off. Scroll a little further and set VRAM usage mode to aggressive. This helps with memory management in larger games. Now go back to the main settings and open app settings. Here you can now manually change the app's language, which is a new feature added in this update. Below that, turn on check for updates so the emulator automatically alerts you whenever a new version releases. Back in the main settings, open the GPU driver option. This section is only for Snapdragon devices. Tap the fetch button and Eden will show you the recommended driver for your phone. For example, my recommended driver is Mr. Purple Turnip T22, but I personally use the latest Kimchi Turnip build because it works best on my device. If you're using Snapdragon 8 Elite or any processor that doesn't support custom drivers, simply stick to the system driver. At the bottom of the main settings page, you'll find the newly added system information option, which shows detailed information about your device's hardware and software. With all settings complete, it's time to test some actual games. I started with Dragon Ball Z, Kakarot. In RC2, this game was completely stuck at 0 FPS and couldn't get past the loading sequence, but now in RC3 it launches without any issues at all. I did notice some background glitches during combat scenes, especially when multiple effects appeared on screen. However, switching the accuracy level from normal to high inside Eden's graphics settings instantly fixes those visual bugs. After adjusting that, the gameplay became surprisingly smooth, staying close to 30 FPS most of the time. Even in open world exploration, the performance was stable with no sudden drops, making it feel genuinely playable and enjoyable. Next, I tested Pokemon Legends ZA. This title now performs between 30 to 35 FPS in most regions, which is a noticeable improvement over the previous build. Some open world objects still show slight flickering, mainly distant assets and foliage, but overall the graphical stability in RC3 has improved a lot. Pokemon battles feel fluid, animations are consistent, and I didn't run into any major gameplay breaking bugs. With the current RC3 update, the game is not just playable, it's smooth enough for long sessions. The final game I tested was The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. As always, the visuals look stunning on Android. I got around 20 FPS using the default settings, which is still playable. On earlier versions, I used to get around 25 to 30 FPS, so it's a small drop, but the game still runs fine. If you apply an FPS boost mod, you can easily reach 40 to 45 FPS, but for this test, I kept everything on default settings. Overall, the performance difference between RC2 and RC3 is not huge. Most 
Most games gain around 2 to 5 FPS depending on the scenario. However, what I noticed immediately is that my device heated up less compared to RC2, which makes long gaming sessions much more comfortable. The stability improvements alone make RC3 worth updating. And that wraps up today's breakdown of Eden V4 RC3. If this guide helped you out, make sure you hit like, drop a comment, and subscribe for more awesome emulator and gaming content. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay creative gamers.